Hey, what is going on, guys? Welcome to the RPJ YouTube channel, and today we are bringing you SmackDown. And today I am here with the SmackDown general manager, the Booker Man of Friday Night SmackDown. It is R B M. You damn right, son. Anyways, here we are on the pre-show, and we got Awesome Kong versus a uh, developmental girl. You know, just let, just to keep it a little secret, you know, you know, guys, don't want to be spoiling the, it for the crowd at Elimination Chamber or the internet. But awesome, but we have Awesome Kong. She gets a squash match. Just we're just seeing how she she's she looks. So she gets a squash match on the pre-show, and yeah, she she looks pretty good. Fifty-six, pretty solid. Got a great rating for her, you know, gimmick. And Denise is still terrible. All right, well, let's see what else this pre-show has in store for us. A pretty solid six-man tag. So we got the world's greatest tag team and Zack Ryder. They get the win over Chris Masters, Yoshitatsu, and Tyler Rex. A.O. Sheldon Benjamin with a 67. Crit Charlie Haas with a 58. Zack Ryder, 53, and then the baby faces, except for Yoshitatsu, are dog shit. That's what you expect. But let's get this show kicked off. Alright, opening up the show with a 77 rating. You goddamn right. So, Stone Cold, he's in the ring. And... That's right, that's right. Alright. Yeah, he's in the ring. He's saying, and everybody else, they, they start kind of go, coming in the ring one at a time. They, they say what they have to say. They say how they are going to be the ones to win the Elimination Chamber and go on to WrestleMania and beat the streak and become heavyweight champion. But Stone Cold says, all right, well, as I announced last week, Shawn Michaels versus The Rock, first time ever, will be main eventing tonight's SmackDown. But that leaves you three. Well, it would be four, but Batista, he got injured, son. What? He broke his ribs, son. What? Dave's Steakhouse. What? Anyway, anyways, so I made a deal with that bastard Vince McMahon. I made a trade ski. So the new member for the Elimination Chamber is this man. He points at the ramp, and, and that's what it is. It's goddamn Randy Orton. That's right. We made we traded for the co for the price of Kofi Kingston. Randy Orton has come to SmackDown. He's taken over Batista's spot, and he's going to the Elimination Chamber. But we got a fatal four way match between Randy Orton, John Cena, Dolph Ziggler, and Drew McIntyre. Let's see who gets the win. And in a seventy three rated match. Randy Orton with his best rating of the of the series so far. Guess my ass RPJ. <laughs> dude, John Cena so, got a 72. Isn't he John Cena? Dude, he's been getting 66 in the past three weeks. I'm happy that he's improving. <laughs> Alright, so anyways. Dolph Randy Cena's Orton, the best worker in this match. John Cena was. But he was off his game. Yeah, Ziggler was off his game, but that doesn't make him the best worker. So, anyways, he would have been, but he was off his game. But Randy Orton, he gets the win over Drew McIntyre after The Rock interferes and costs Drew the match, directly setting him up for the RKO. Randy Orton, he wins his first match on SmackDown, and what a match, too. Afterwards... Randy Orton, he's celebrating. Randy Orton pulling out Dang. terrible ratings. All right, all right. Keep for it. being Randy right. Orton. Dude, he was never that charismatic. I don't know why you have such high expectations of him. Because he's Randy Orton. He, he was never he was never charismatic, man. He's he, good. You just think, no, he he's just a multi-time world champion. He has exciting matches. He has good opponents. 
he's done some cool things, but that doesn't mean he's amazing on the microphone or in segments. I think you just have rose-tinted glasses. He's only become charismatic in the last five years. Anyways, in the next segment... Hell yeah, all right, we are backstage. Lita is about to jump Natalia and kick her ass for the BDSM shit she... Natalia put Lita through last week, you know, where she taped her up and, and shit. So she's about to attack Natalia, kick her ass. But Stone Cold, he sees us out as he's coming out of the office with a bottle of whiskey in hand. He breaks, he gets in between them, and he breaks the fight up before it can even happen. He's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Natalia, I saw that, BD, I saw that BDSM shit you did to Lita last week. You no, no need to be duct taping people. So... I am putting a non I'm putting a non touch agreement on both of you. You can't touch each other for the foreseeable for the next twenty four hours until your match, or else the match is canceled. But here's what I'll do. I'll put a pick your I'll let you two pick each other's matches for tonight. Pick your poison. And maybe and that'll keep you two occupied. And they both kind of shake their heads in agreement. But let's see what, what Natalia had in store for Lita. In the next segment. In a 56-rated match, Lita gets the win over Michelle McCool with the moonsault. So it looks like Natalia, she picked Michelle McCool to, take, to try to take on Lita, but to no avail. In the next segment. All right, so Tyson Kidd. We cut, we cut backstage. Tyson Kidd, Brian Danielson, Evan Bourne, and David Hartsmith, they are tearing up catering. They are going at each other. They are brawling. So Evan Bourne, he does like a 450 splash off of, the, off of one of the catering tables onto Tyson Kidd. David Hartsmith, he picks up, he picks up one of those buffet plate things. You know that like uh, that can conceal heat and stuff that seals heat in. He picks one of those up filled with pancakes and hucks it at Brian Danielson's head. When Steve Austin he steps into catering, he was like, "Whoa, whoa, whoa, break it up! I was just looking for a fruit salad. I was getting hungry. What? I was starving. What?" Anyways, before we get to the tag team match at Elimination Chamber, I want to put you, all four of you in singles competition tonight. Brian Danielson versus Tyson Kidd, and David Hartsmith versus Evan Bourne. In fact, David Hartsmith, Evan Bourne, your match is right now. Get your asses out to the ring. All right, and then what happens in the match? Pretty solid match. Natalia did some good work at ringside. In about 12 minutes, Evan Bourne defeated David Hart Smith with a corkscrew moonsault. Pretty solid match from these guys, honestly. Evan Bourne with the 67. But let's see what else is in store for the show. RPJ, what do you think of the show so far? I think it's been a pretty good show so far. And it looks like... Lita had a handicap match for Natalia in mind. She takes on the Bella Twins all at once, but she gets and holy fuck, Natalia with a 69. She's going places. Anyway, she gets the win over the Bella Twins. She fucking pins Nikki Bella with a German suplex, breaks her fucking neck. Well, let's see what we got. But so Natalia, she's celebrating when. Lita attacks her from behind. My God, she beats her down. She handcuffs her to the rope, and she holds the title in front of her face. She's saying that the title's coming back to her. In the next segment, let's see what's going on. Fuck yes, yeah, saving the show. So, Stone Cold, he's in his office, feet kicked up on his desk. He's drinking, he's taking a swig of beer when John Cena bursts through his office. But so many people have burst through Stone Cold's office at this point. He's used to it. So he takes it. So he calmly takes a sip of beer. He puts it on a coaster because he's not a monster. 
and he looks at Cena. Cena's like, "What the hell, man? I can't believe you. You know, I can't believe you, I you bring Randy Orton in. He's my arch enemy. Why would you do this? We hate each other's guts. Blah 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 blah." And Stone Cold's like, "Whoa, whoa, 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 son. I may hate your guts, but I. But this isn't because of you. It's because I want to make some excellent television. This isn't." This is because more because I wanted to pull the wool over Vince's eyes. I traded Kofi Kingston for Randy Orton. I did this because I want another star. I want a star with killer instincts, unlike you. I want a star who can, who has a certain who has a certain presence, unlike you. I want a star who can get the job done, unlike you. This isn't about you, John. This is about the this is about the people at home. Who tune in each and every week on SmackDown? This is about the people who pay tickets to, for some reason, to come and see you. This is this is about them. I want to get butts and seats, and I want to get viewerships, and I want to make sure they're happy. And I thought Randy Orton coming to SmackDown would make him happy, and it looks like I'm right so far. So get your ass out of my office before I kick your fucking ass. He doesn't say fucking. It's PG, but. <laughs> You know, message has been sent. But what is but what is going on next? Wow. Fuck yes. Tyson Kidd defeats Brian Danielson with a springboard elbow drop. These guys, they went all out. The match got the crowd buzzing. So Tyson Kidd Kid gets sixty seven. Yeah, sixty seven. Brian Danielson with the sixty nine. Yeah, th- look I Whenever Tyson Kidd doesn't have doesn't have bad chemistry, he's pulling out good ratings. But yeah, so this match it did well. I asked them to uh well seal the show. And quite frankly, well, they haven't. This but this is still a pretty damn good match. Tyson Kidd, he gets the win over Brian Danielson heading into his tag team match against Danielson and Evan Bourne. Who will come out the victor? But, moving on to our main event. First, we got a hype package. Oh, no, fucking, I'm just just kidding. Uh, you fell for it. Fucking fell for it. Bitches, suckers. So, Edge, Christian, and the Dudleys. They have a confrontation. They stare down. They say, Elimination Chamber, it's coming up. We're taking the titles back. And Dudley's are like, hell fucking no. We have we have won the titles ten times now in the WWE. We've won the ECW tag titles. We've won we've won t- tag titles all over the world. We've won them in Japan. We've won them all over America. We're not getting and, and this is the, by far our more our most special tag team title win, titles we've had. This is our 10th title gold in the WWE. There's no damn way we are letting these go after just one defense. No way. So it looks, and so they kind of start filing out, you know. But Matt Hardy, he comes in. He cuts Christian off before he leaves. He's like, Christian, why'd you have to attack me? I understand Edge is your best friend, but I thought we were friends too. You could have just said... We could have won the match, you know. I I would have understood. We could have done the free bird rule thing with with Edge, you and me, you know. Or you know, if you just wanted to tag with Edge, you could have just told me. But you, you didn't have to attack me. And Christian's he can't, he paused, he he was walking out, but he he stops. He looks at Matt. He says, "Look, Matt, Edge. He's he's my friend, and friendship is stronger than a work shi- a workplace acquaintanceship." And he leaves. Matt Hardy, he looks kind of sad. But now, we get into a hype package. Fuck yes. So, Rock versus Awesome. Fuck no. That would be cool for a main event, but (laughs) Rock. (laughs) The Rock versus Shawn Michaels for the first time ever. We get a hype package. Two-minute hype package. You know, detailing their storied careers and how they've crossed paths but never fought in the squared circle. But that all stops tonight on SmackDown, the third week of February in 2010. Let's see how it goes. Let's 
see this. Wow. 82. I th that might be one of the best matches we've had all series. Yep. But Sh Shawn Michaels, he gets the win over The Rock with a sweet chin music after Drew McIntyre, who's been a thorn in The Rock's side this whole time since The Rock has returned. He costs The Rock the match. He distracts him, setting up Shawn Michaels for a sweet chin music. And what a match to end off the show. But to end the show off... All six men who are going to be the, in the Elimination Chamber, they come out, they start hitting their finishers on each other, they are brawling with each other. When the lights go out, gong, the lights come back up, it's The Undertaker standing at the top of the ramp, holding his title above the head. All six men stop in their tracks. They look up towards the ramp, and they are reminded of what they are fighting for. They are fighting for the opportunity to face The Undertaker for the World Heavyweight title. Not just, to be, not just for a World Heavyweight title match, but to possibly end the streak at WrestleMania. Who will it be? Will it be the legend killer Randy Orton? Will it be the show-off Dolph Ziggler making his rise up through the entrance? Will he break through at Elimination Chamber and, and ascend to the top of the mountain? Will it be Super Cena, John Cena, re-establishing himself as the face of the WWE? Will it be the future Drew McIntyre going into WrestleMania and becoming double champion? Will it be The Rock, the great one, making his grand return after years of being away? Or will it be Shawn Michaels, the veteran who hasn't held a world title since 2002? Will it be Shawn Michaels getting his revenge against The Undertaker for last year at WrestleMania? Will he finally have The Undertaker's number? Who will face The Undertaker at WrestleMania? Find out next time at Elimination Chamber. But the show, it started off it started off hot. It slowed way down. We had some pretty bad segments. But we, we really picked it up towards the end. RPJ, what do you think the show got? Uh, I think it gets a solid 80. I think you're a bit too optimistic. I'll say a 75, but I wouldn't be surprised if it was lower. But let but our Hey, you there? Yeah, I'm here. Oi. Hey. What the hell, son? Eighty, all right. Oh wow, I was right. Dang, I'm really good at predicting these, bro. Except when you haven't got a, gotten them right at all, except for this one time. I always get them right. Look back at the video. No, the fuck you don't. Yes, I no, do, you bro. Yes, I no, do. You don't. No, you don't. Yes, I do. You've maybe gotten two of them right. But you never get them always right. You I haven't. get them right usually, bro. You got them. This is the, probably the third time you've ever gotten them right. No, it's not, dude. But anyways, I fucking creamed raw yet no, again. No, it's not.
I mean, just from that raw is the yeah, show. Bro, oh, no, no, I just think have only a bad one show. Or once this entire series so far. No, 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 we're making a back. We're making a comeback, okay? We're making a comeback. You know, I think it's just time to face facts that SmackDown is the B show. Or, I mean, A show. Yeah! Fuck. Yeah! SmackDown is the B show. Let's just Bro, face I don't the think facts. You... Let's just face the facts, RBM. You said it yourself. You said it yourself, Dude, bro. I say, dude, I'm... Dude, I, I pulled a U and I got all mixed up. SmackDown is the A show, Raw is the B show. No, 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 no. I think what you said first is what is what is uh is what the the facts is, you know, the truth. You wanna repeat that? <laughs> no. But I do you wanna try I, I, I want you, I want you to repeat SmackDown is the B show once again. Well no I no, I can't tell a lie. Sorry. Nah, you ain't telling no lies, though. You ain't telling no lies. Yeah, but I would be, though. Because Raw is, in fact, the B-show. It sucked diddly yucks. It gave up their top star, Randy Orton. <sighs> this week. This week, we're the B-show. This week. You've been Technically... the B-show all, all the whole series, except for one week. How does that make you feel? How does that make you feel? You We're just getting started. All right, you cut out, but I'm gonna. We're just getting started, bro. Alright, let's end the video now. He keeps cutting out. And that really is it for this episode. Alright, yeah, whatever. <laughs> what? <laughs> that was late. Bro, it's your bad it's your bad internet connection, dude. Yeah, yeah it is. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. And I don't think it's the internet connection. I think it's my laptop. I think it overheats. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode. This is RPJ with RBM, my good friend. And we are signing off. Peace. Bitches.